What? It's my feeding time. And I'm watching Modern Family. What do you want? We're supposed to be doing a podcast, man. We got to do, you know, some predictions and stuff. I thought I canceled. I thought I quit that podcast. You haven't quit anything. You're contractually obligated to continue doing this show. Fine. Make it quick. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to a big, big show this week. We've got predictions, we've got news, we've got rumors, we've got a whole bunch of stuff to go through. Tim, welcome. How you doing? You're interrupting my feeding time. Yeah, I know I'm interrupting your feeding time. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Adam. I'm Tim. (laughs) Anyway, all right, yeah, we got... We got a whole bunch of stuff to get to, and we're going to start right off with the predictions. We've got NXT and NXT UK's Worlds Collide and the Royal Rumble to go through this week. So let's start off with the the least favorite show, Royal Rumble. We're going to start with the Rumble? Okay. Yeah. It's NXT and NXT UK. Worlds Collide is going to be the better show. Oh, we know it's the better show. So, we'll save those predictions for the second half. Okay. Okay. All right. So, we have eight confirmed matches. No pre-show matches that have been announced. Which one's going to be on what? I have added a ninth match, which I think will be on the pre-show. Because they've kind of been building to this, but they may or may not announce it. That is New Day defending the SmackDown Tag Team Championships against Miz and Morrison. So... We've added this on. This has not been officially announced, just in case they do announce it on Sunday. Okay. So so we have a prediction. If it does happen, if it doesn't happen, yeah. it's just great. Um, but so that is officially going to be what I put on the pre-show. Okay. All right. So we have, the. besides that, we have the eight other matches. We have the men's Royal Rumble match, the women's Royal Rumble match, the Fiend, Bray Wyatt, defending against Daniel Bryan in a strap match. Becky Lynch versus Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship. Roman Reigns versus King Corbin. And that has a stipulation, doesn't it? Yes, falls count anywhere. That's right. And we have, if any other match is going to be put on the pre-show, it'll be this one. Yep. Shorty G versus Sheamus. We have Bailey defending the SmackDown Women's Championship against Lacey Evans. We have Andrade, CM Almas. I don't care if his name is just Andrade. It's always going to be CM Almas defending the United States Championship against Herberto Carrillo. Carrillo? Carrillo. Okay. Um, as well. So, we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up to the, the future uh, matches. Okay. Adam, in case this match does happen, who will win? New Day defending their successfully defending their tag titles, or will it be the Miz and Morrison? New Day. And I'm gonna throw an extra little prediction in here. Xavier Woods will make it will make an appearance. It's possible. He'll be coming down with them. You I'm not saying that he's because... been cleared for in ring action, but he'll be ringside. You just want it because of your boy, what's his name, predicted him to make an appearance in his uh, fantasy warfare on WrestleTalk. You know what? I'm just happy that it's, that Adam Blompied is back on YouTube. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going with Miz and Morrison because that's the story they're absolutely building okay. at the moment. Okay. So I could see them losing this one and then picking up the next one, but Morrison just came back. They're not going to want him to lose right off the bat. True, I don't true. Think. All right, we have for the United States Championship, Andrade versus Herberto. Um, this match came up of after Andrade 
retained in a ladders match, which I've heard was a, a really good ladders match. Yeah, I mean, Andrade and Rey Mysterio have been turning out great matches together. And then yeah. you add ladders to the deal. So Yep. And then after the mat winning, he was going to DDT versus Ray on the concrete. And Humberto, who wore Ray's mask, came out from the fans, pulled it off, and attacked Andrade, setting up this matchup um, for that. So, who do you have? Uh, I'm going with Andrade. Yeah, same here. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm glad that we, we can agree. It's going to be a killer match. I hope so, because... I mean, Haruto has basically been buried since arrival, but maybe um, Paul Heyman finally convinced um, Vince to let him actually push him for a little bit. Or at least but, let him do something, basically. Yeah. But we'll see. All right, the next matchup is for the Women's SmackDown Championship. Bailey defending against Lacey Evans. I'm going with Bailey. Really, do you even need to ask? Roman Reigns it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bailey is going to retain here. Uh, Lacey Evans, I still feel, is nowhere on the level that she needs to be to be holding a belt no. right now. I mean, she's definitely getting over more with the fans. Yes. As a baby face than she, her go-away heat that she got because of the stupid catwalk as a heel on Raw. Oh, yeah. So she's not ready for the championship. Right. Um, to win here. Uh, what they do, I do feel like they need, especially since there was possibly rumors that they were going to set up Bailey and Sasha for WrestleMania. That I think that would probably be there, but we'll yeah. see. Okay, uh, I'm just going to put should Sheamus for the next matchup. I, I don't want this to be a match where it's basically Sheamus and Brian, uh, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan's all over again. <laughs> like I don't want to see it be a quick match and it's just a big boot and done mm -hmm. what I would like to see is that uh, Chad Gable oh and uh, I was printing his shirts this week <laughs> it, it's a pretty I like the design I like it um, but, I'm sorry shorty G it's just uh, yeah I mean I don't mind the, the design of the shirts they're pretty cool uh, but I feel that this is I would like to see him actually win and out wrestle Sheamus in this match. Oh yeah, same here. But Sheamus just came back. I don't know if they're gonna do that. So who do you have, Sheamus? No, I'm going Shorty G. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, knowing my luck, that will probably what will be ha will happen. But <laughs> I just it's Sheamus. They're gonna like, we're gonna build him up. Shorty G's going to keep losing to Sheamus, to, and that will get him over. So when he finally gets a victory, he who does beat Sheamus, it means something. Yeah, because considuing losing to the same person gets someone over. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't well, help it anyone. For it worked for Roman constantly losing to Brock. No, no. it didn't. No, All by, right. by the Speaking end, we Roman, were cheering that Brock was dropping the belt. That was it. <laughs> if we actually, there, and at the same time, we were booing that he was dropping into Roman. Right. So it was a lose lose. It didn't really work. Speaking of the big dog, the big dog. Roman Reigns versus King Corbin in a Falls Count Anywhere's matchup. You have a stipulation matchup where the uh, two people fight, and the winning person gets a, that person's boss basically gets to pick the stipulation, and you pick a Falls Count Anywhere's match. When the whole point, the reason of this is people keep running into the match. Let's do a false count error match where we can they can still fucking run into it. Yeah, of course. Instead of a steel cage, you know, that can prevent that. Yep. Even that is doesn't ha prevent people from getting in. Either that or so. a lumberjack match where everyone's just right there anyway. Yeah. So, but... This is going to be the matchup where Reigns finally conquers Corbin. Yeah, Reigns. No, there is a possibility if Reigns is winning the Rumble, he'll lose here to throw us off. Okay, that would just be poor storytelling. Oh, I know. I would rather have Reigns win here uh, and then win the Rumble 
That way you just go, nah, he just had a great night. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. All right. Since we're talking about the man, let's go with Becky Lynch versus Asuka. Is Becky Lynch ready for Asuka? Let's hope so, because she's never beat her. Um, by the way, so I always put Becky Lynch down for us, so we can move on. Okay. <laughs> I mean, in a perfect world, this is where I would actually move the belt over to Asuka and have them go all the way to WrestleMania and have them have a storyline from here to WrestleMania. And nope. Yeah. No. No, I wouldn't do that. I'd, have, I'd still have Asuka win the belt here. For, but not have it be then built up to Becky at WrestleMania. No, 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 no. You, the story is, of course, we're talking about WWE, so this will never happen. Yeah. But long-term storytelling. Asuka is the one person Becky just can't beat. Yeah. yeah. And so the storyline is over like the next, th- like not next year, but the year after that. So two more years later, we finally get Becky and Asuka again. At WrestleMania for the main event. And that's when Becky finally is able to conquer uh, Asuka. What? Long-term story long term storytelling? What is this? I mean, we, we're, the quickest I would do is next year at WrestleMania. But no. I mean, I'd, I'd say do it two years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but no. Becky Lynch is going go, to win this one. Um, especially, I think it's a great thing because one of the rumors for the women is to win, one of the favorites apparently, is Kari Sane. Ooh. Which, because her contract's apparently coming up and she is not happy right now. And there's big money being played to get her to go back to Japan to stardom. And you know, um, you know AEW would be keeping an eye on her as well because... Exactly. That'd be a big name they could bring over that people would recognize... Who was super over with that their audience that was in who watches NXT as well to put in their women's division? Yes. Um. So, but so it, I'm I would be great for that one, but we'll see. Um, I think I know who's winning this one. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to Fiend versus Daniel Bryan in a strap match. So Bray Wyatt. Yes, Bray Wyatt. Though I would not. I would be absolutely. Fine, if Brian beat the Fiend here, I would be fine with it too. But I, I just, I feel that it would be, it would have to be in a way that everyone would, like, it would be a, a choke out, and yeah. that the ref it's, refuses to check the Fiend, and yeah. Daniel Bryan well, then just goes for the pin on a basically knocked out Fiend. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. That's my, but the thing, like. And Brian and Bray have that mentality and knowledge where they could absolutely craft a finish where Brian could win, not hurt the Fiend in any way, shape, or form, and still be the threat that he is. Yes. Whereas, like, where the original idea, the, the, or the rumor is, it's going to be Bray and Roman at WrestleMania. Reigns conquers the Fiend way too soon that will hurt him because it's we haven't had a full year. Where this... The way the storytelling they're telling with Brian, it they could change the belt onto him. They could then drop the belt back to the fiend, and not be a, a, a hurt, hurt anything. Whereas the storyline they'll tell with Roman is the good, the big dog, the hero conquers the fiend, the villain, which we've they've tried to tell over and over again. It's, it hurts the fiend. Where this they can actually do a storyline where it won't hurt the fiend. I. Uh- I have a feeling, though, that they could tell a storyline where uh, it, it'll it keep the Fiend as, like, a white-hot threat to anybody on the roster by involving Roman's family. You do realize, we're talking about Vince here, it's going to be, Reigns has to conquer the Fiend on his own. No help from anyone else. I know. And it's going to hurt, and because it's Roman, it will hurt the Fiend. Yeah, I I'm, I know that, but all right. So we are now into 
the Royal Rumble's predictions. Yes. So we're going to pull something out of the Money in the Bank ladder match that we did last year. Where we got three picks. <laughs> so we'll get three picks for the men and three picks for the women's. Okay. okay. Um, and the, like we did with that one, if our one of our secondary or third picks go, um, is the one and someone else picked it before them, the person who picked it sooner is the one who gets the credit. Yeah, whoever has the higher pick. Yeah, on the ranking of order of picking it. All right, so Adam. Yes. Well, I'm going to have you start off with your picks, your three picks for the men's Royal Rumble. No, Men? the women's Royal Rumble. Women's Royal Rumble. Which right now it sucks because there's only seven people announced for it. Yes. Um, so we kind of have to go off of based, literally based on rumors at this point. Exactly. Uh, wow. Honestly, I like your idea of Kari Sane. Oh. I like it. I don't know. I'm hoping they will. Uh, but but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I know who wins this one. Honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my number one, being mm-hmm. Alexa Bliss. Ooh, I like that one. It's oh, kind of a, it's them, kind of a risk. I putting her in the one of your picks is not a bad pick. I think no. She, I actually think there's a great thing. I actually think she needs to get back into the title picture within the next year. Mm-hmm. Or put them back in the um, tag title picture. Once um, the Kabuki Warriors drop the belts, put Alexa Bliss and um, Nikki Cross back in the title picture for the tag titles. Oh, yeah. Women's tag titles. Or put Bliss back in there. But I think because she was already in the title picture last year, but even though she didn't win it, give us a full year before we actually see her challenge for any championship. But again, we're a rumble. It's, it's it's Little Miss Bliss. Yeah. And she's a baby face, finally. Um, they're actually sticking to. <laughs> my, okay, number number two, two my number two is going to be Kari Sane. Kari Sane. And I'm actually typing these names out because <laughs> just putting initials. Yeah, you're going to get. Will not, <laughs> will not work out. We'll look back later on this and go, I have no idea what the pick was. Yeah, it has exactly. been three weeks and I don't remember what happened. It's been a week, and I don't know which one it was. <laughs> it's Tuesday after the Rumble, and I don't know what this means anymore. It's ten minutes ago after we picked this. Who'd you pick again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly. Uh, my number uh, three. Andy, my, third, my number three, Charlotte. Charlotte. Ooh. This putting her, uh, and honestly, I see her going for the Raw Women's title against Becky. They did tease it this past week. Exactly. On, which is dumb we don't need another becky charlotte matchup we've literally got we, we literally got the um brandy um cena thing out of becky and charlotte yeah okay so my number one pick i'm gonna go with Shayna baszler okay um that is the rumor strong pick for the rumble then my number two pick is going to be the exact same pick as yours, Kari Sane. Ooh. The person I actually think, I, at this point, I do prefer. I love Shayna Baszler as the, the winning the Rumble as well. But I think Kari Sane, if they want to keep her around, you got to do this. Exactly. But, and I think, and I just love, also, she, the, since she they turned heel, Asuka and her, she, her transformation, her ring form, the paint, and the look, like the, almost like the emo kind of look with the she just looks so good and and i was my worry about her when she went to the main roster when her whole uh pirate gimmick um (laughs) kind of played out can can they transition that to something else and she proved that she can yeah i'm pretty sure that she could but it's just like it's wwe can't she do it in wwe and she has so uh, that there and then the wild card for me because this is who they really want to win the Royal Rumble, but there's no guarantee, is Ronda Rousey. <laughs> that would mean that Ronda would have to show up. That's the thing. That's There's been rumors that she's been... Because the, the reason why Shayna Baszler is the rumored winner is if they, is they're going to go with her because, they A, they set her up in the Survivor Series. Yep. And, B, 
is that they couldn't get Rousey back to face Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. They wanted Shane to go with Shayna. Okay. Okay. So, I am gonna put that out there. I don't like I don't like Rousey winning because this matchup between Becky and Rousey should have been last year's and not this year's. Yes. No Charlotte. Yes. But oh well. Okay, we're gonna move on to the men's Royal Rumble. I will go first on this one. And honestly, I don't really, I don't know where to go with this one. But so I'm gonna go with the easy one, Roman Reigns for my number one pick. Okay. Um, who is confirmed for this? So okay, let me run down. It's 27 out of 30 slots have already been confirmed. We have Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, AJ Styles, Eric Rowan, Randy Orton, Rey Mysterio, Ricochet, Drew McIntyre, Elias, King Corbin, Dolph Ziggler, Otis, Tucker, Rusev, Bobby Lashley, Aleister Black, Buddy Murphy, Braun Strowman, Shinsuke Nakamura, Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, Kofi Kingston, Big E, R-Truth, John Morrison, and The Miz. Okay, I'm changing my number one pick. Okay. Roman is my number two pick. Okay. Drew McIntyre is my number one pick. Ooh. Because there's been talks for the longest time of really pushing, giving him a big man push. And now that he's turned face and he's doing really well, this would be a perfect opportunity. Because you get Drew versus Brock at WrestleMania. Yeah. Those two could have some fun. And then my next pick is my wish pick. And he happens to be on Raw um, Raw already. And I, we already know we can get a great match out of these two. AJ Styles. I like your pick. I think I do think Vince at some point is going to give AJ Styles a Rumble win before he reti- his contract his new contract expires and he retires. Um, I think the best thing to do it would be his last year in the company. Win the Rumble, Rumble, go to WrestleMania, win the championship for this final time, have a good run, have his, and then have like a moment like over. His final match is literally challenging the person who beat him in a retirement match. If he can't, he retires. He loses, he retires from wrestling. Hall of Fame. All right. But um, he still has a few years left, but like that's what I would do. Like if when he does win the Royal Rumble, do it in his last year if he's going to ever get it. But this is a good thing. We know he can go with Brock, and it would be – it was one of the better matches we were looking forward to all of a sudden when they did the surprise change. And So this would be a great matchup for WrestleMania. All right. All right. And who's all your right, number Adam, three? You're... That is my number three. Never Roman mind. my second. I moved so Roman who did you pick second. again? <laughs> Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns, and AJ Styles. I, like, I didn't even remember halfway through the conversation. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Dude, try to stop up one, one-upping me. <laughs> one-upper. All right. So uh, I've got my top three picks. I've uh, been going through. Who are you through. again? What? Who are you again? I don't know who you are. I can't oh, remember. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my number one pick, this to me, is the person that has the most is the most likely to win, Seth Rollins. Ooh, the Monday Night Messiah. He's going to be using the AOP and Buddy Murphy to do his work it's for him. Yeah. I just don't want Brock Lesnar and um, Seth again. No, I I know, but at the same time, more seems reasonable. My number two. Now, this is where I like to get let the heart take over a little bit. Number two, Kevin Owens. Okay. I want to see a Kevin Owens-Brock Lesnar match go the distance at so WrestleMania why? and have Kevin walk out and be like, no, I am, I am the uh, Beast Slayer. <laughs> and then shove it in Seth's face, setting up a run between the two of them, going to... Um, do, 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 do. SummerSlam. 
That would be oh, wait, wait, wait. because just, they have a long so you know, term history between each other. Just so you know, I just changed my number three pick to Kevin Owens. I oh, you son of a no! <laughs> so, but he's my number three pick, not my number two. Oh, okay. Uh, my number three pick is well, it's just me being like, oh, wouldn't that be cool? Uh, but it probably won't ever happen. Rusev, <laughs> Rusev Day. Just to try to win him over so that he'll re-sign with the company. They'll and then push him, here. him back out. Yep. And then immediately drop him back out. Oh yeah, yeah. He'll get he'll have All the number right. one thing, announce that he's going after uh the universal title, and then at uh Elimination Chamber, he loses his number one contender spot. And I'm like, what yeah. the what? No. <laughs> buried him because he said no i'm not gonna resign but i'll be here through <laughs> wrestlemania have fun guys <laughs> all right so we have three questions for the royal rumble how many eliminations will brock lesnar get okay who will eliminate brock lesnar and a shock entry into the men's or women's royal rumble which is only three spots for the men yeah uh so adam we'll give you go the first answer who will? How many eliminations will Brock get before being eliminated? Okay, so Kane owns the record at thirteen, right? No, no. Kane owns the record of all time of all oh. the Royal Rumbles combat. Roman owns the record at fourteen or fifteen. Then I'm gonna look that up right now because I know Kane held it for the longest time yeah, with something like thirteen. To, yeah, they gave it to um, Reigns to, as a way to hype him up a few several okay. years ago. Royal Rumble Elimination Record. Because, I mean, I would like, if it if there is a very high record, he probably won't beat it. It's 15. It's 15. Okay, yeah, he, he'll have Wait, something on, like... On. No, hold on. Reigns, who entered at 15, proceeded to eliminate Noble Names this before finally finishing with 12 eliminations, broke Kaner's record... That was 11, so 12 records. Okay, 12 so it's 12. Elimination. Oh, that's yes. not that bad. Then, yeah, I could say that uh, Brock Lesnar pulls out 13 here. Okay. Some of them super dominant. Some of them a little bit more sneaky. Like, okay. you know, somebody is about, like, two people are battling, and they're both trying to lift each other over, and he just comes over and, you know, clotheslines one of them, knocking both of them out, giving him two there. Okay. He F five somebody out of the ring at one point. That's gonna be like Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Let's see. Or or I Buddy Murphy. Him, I know they're gonna give him a lot, but I just don't think they're gonna. Have, I don't think they want him to break the record because I have a feeling that this is, the record is going to be broken here. If they want, if anyone will break Roman's record re anytime soon, it would be Brock because that's the only person Vince would allow to break that record. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to go 15. 15. I think they're going to have him eliminate half the roster. That is ridiculous. Okay. It's, All it's right. Vince McMahon. I yeah. I think I, so. I know. I know. <laughs> Watch. Brock enters at number one. Um. Keith Lee enters at number two. The two brawl each other. And then as number two is about to enter the ring, Keith Lee knocks him out of the ring. He's done. He's in there for three minutes. He gets to go back to the back. <laughs> <laughs> no. Everyone just stops it. Like, the entire audience just stops and goes, oof. <laughs> it's a collective oof. Brock yeah. accidentally eliminates himself while after being thrown to the corner. He hits the corner. He's oiled up too much and slides up over the top rope and out. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be Keith Lee is literally right. standing in the ring just going, uh, what do we do now? <laughs> okay, so who will eliminate Brock Lesnar in the Rumble? I will answer this one first. I'm going with my pick to win the Rumble, and that's Drew McIntyre. Because the idea is here is to set up, the rumor was to set up... Um, Brock's opponent. Then I say the person would win the Rumble, which you know I have, but 
I'm going to set up Drew because even if he doesn't win the Rumble, I do think they're going to that would be the way to set it up. Whoever eliminates Brock is going to be probably his WrestleMania opponent. So, who do you okay. have? I'm going with Big E. Big E. Ooh, Big E. Partly because this is where also the Big E turn, not necessarily turn, on Kofi Kingston is going to happen. Kofi is going to want to challenge uh, Brock one more time before WrestleMania. Because he kind of, he kind of feels that that's going to be his, his ticket, one, as a... Uh, as a shot for the title mm-hmm. and re- and even though they're on SmackDown and raw, I know that I know that, but he somehow gets himself a, sh- you know, a match with Brock, mm-hmm. except for the fact that big E after eliminating Brock goes, Kofi, stop it. No, you're not getting that. It's not happening. And then we get a Kofi versus big E program for a little while. That hopefully doesn't actually break up the new day, but instead goes, Kofi is leaving the new day. That's the ending of it. Okay. All right. Shock entry into the Rumble. Now, when I say shock, I mean we. It's not someone who's not can't be rumored. It's just someone we don't know, who most likely. Um, so someone from NXT. Uh, Hall of Famer, a legend, or something like that. Who do you got? Do you do you really want me to do this? An absolute shocker? Yeah. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The nearly 21-year work is going to be revealed. And returning to the ring, ladies and gentlemen, hey, Owen Hart. Before you... <laughs> I just want to say, remember, this could be a tiebreaker here. I, okay, damn it. <laughs> Not really. You said Owen Hart? I'm no. putting Owen Hart down. No. No, I mean also at the same time. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to blow your minds when the music hits. It's CM Punk. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, a more realistic one would be John Cena. Okay, John. John Cena. See, that one I find more realistic. I mean, the the rumors of Edge, to me, eliminate him from contention in this because you said that they can't be heavily rumored. Cody Rhodes enters the... I'm going with a return. A return? A return. And this is going to be for the women's. Nia Jax. Okay. I like that. That, That's not a... I mean... Ugh. It's Nia Jax. But still. Yeah, I know. It's a return. It's a rumor. It's a rumor. Because she's been out since she had double... um, Tore both of her uh, ACLs since WrestleMania. Um, And she's been training there. And there's been rumor that she could be... uh, one of the entries her return would be here okay so i'm gonna play it safe here <laughs> and hopefully if we need a tiebreaker this will be my tiebreaker okay i and i'm putting it in the rumble that actually has an op- more option for surprises since there's only like five people announced I... <laughs> for the women's <laughs> all right we're gonna move on to worlds collide where we have Six matchups, one pre-show, and no questions because I don't care about enough to try to figure out a question here. Okay. But the match uh, from the top down, we have Imperium versus the Undisputed Era. Rhea Ripley defending her NXT Championship against Tony Storm, and we have Finn Val- Balor versus Igra Droganoff. The guy that um, Cesaro had a matchup randomly back in, that only extended the time frame of NXT TakeOver Cardiff. Yeah. Which was an awesome matchup. It was sick. <laughs> um, it, so, which is great to see here. Um, then we have a four, fatal four way for the Cruiserweight Championship between 
Angel Garza, Isaiah Swerve Scott, Jordan Devlin, and Travis Banks. We have you could it, it could make a, a case for almost like a dream matchup in a sense. Yeah. Of DIY versus Mustache Mountain. That is Johnny Gagaro and Tommaso Ciampa versus Trent Seven and Tyler Bates. And then on the pre-show, we have Mia Yim going against KD Ray, NXT UK Women's Champion, which is not for the championship. The All last right. I heard. You ready to jump so, into these? We're going to go right to the pre-show matchup. This is going to be, I'm going with Kaylee Ray. I'm going to go with Maya Yim here. Okay. I have no distinct reason. I'm just going to go with her because she's the opposite of your pick. Ha ha. You just want to win. You want your championship back, don't you? I want, I want to say that I'm the champion again. Seriously. <laughs> you want to stop. Hey, just so you know, if I win this one, I'll get be up to our three in a row wins in, a, in and so I'd have to win a win at the Royal Rumble would break that tr streak of no one going beyond my five record Ugh. of hitting three in a row streak so I'm trying to break that here I have the opportunity but you win one you put an end to it that's true that's true and this show is tonight by the way yeah so I don't know if you get this show up in time but I, regardless I, Try to do the flip over on this as fast as possible today. So, but this is a chance. Well, regardless when this goes up, you could put an end to my win streak right away. I could get and get it back, or you could retain again tomorrow night. Uh, I'm on at the Rumble, but who knows? All right, so DIY versus Moustache Mountain. I think this is an easy one. Yeah, it is. I'm. I put DIY for us both. Smart move, smart move. Yeah, um, it's the beards versus the mustaches. Beards win, bro. I do, I do think they could pull uh, a swerve here and go with Mustache Mountain, but I don't think they will because of the big um, idea that they're just reuniting it is DIY yep. moment. And I think this might be a tease of where they're going to be going with must uh, DIY. I think they're going to be the ones that dethrone um Undisputed Era. Yeah. I hope so, because I hope they don't go with... Um, if... Uh, bro... Broserweight. Broserweight? Um, it's uh, Pete Dunn and... Um, Ma oh, Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle in the finals of the Dusty Classic. <laughs> if they win it, they would get a, shot, a tag team title shot at the Port uh, NXT TakeOver Portland. I hope they don't be the ones to dethrone him because I think DIY should be the ones to dethrone him because bring them back together and actually give him a run with the belts now. Being Johnny Gongaro's actually first chance of actually having a championship that he doesn't lose on his first title defense. Hold on. Hold on. I have, okay, I have a better storyline to build for, regarding that. Uh, DIY dethrones. Undisputed Era for the tag titles. Mm -hmm. Then Ciampa dethrone takes out, gets the uh, North American Championship. Then Gargano gets the NXT Championship. Literally going, the two of us are better than your entire team. And then slowly the, the titles come back off from DIY, but you know, that... that. You do realize... Um um, Roderick Strong just lost the North American Championship to Keith Lee. He'll get it back soon enough so this storyline can work. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. <laughs> it's like, I don't care. <laughs> Fuck Keith Lee. Put it back on Strong. Yeah, it's just going to happen, okay? Keith Lee's going to get called up to the uh, main event, and uh, the main roster, and he's going to have to drop the uh, NXT North American belt somehow. I think Triple H is going to fight to keep Keith Lee on NXT for a very long time. Now that oh, he's definitely. Really over, it would be a smart move. Though it would be, if he got moved to the main roster, I think Vince would push Keith Lee. Yeah. He's got the look, man. Top, but. All right. So we both have DIY there. We have the Cruiserweight Championship matchup. Adam, I will give you this one to pick. Okay. 
uh, since I know no one involved, I'm going to have to say that the champion, Angel Garza, is going to retain here. I am going here, too. Um, though I think it would be kind of cool if someone from UK, NXT UK pick up the championship here. Because they can move that belt over there. Because it is an NXT championship now. And that way they would have a third brand belt over there for people to fight over. Because they do have some cruiserweights over there. But exactly. I think it, I think Angel Gazera is going to be the one who retains. Because you still technically have 205 Live, and if you don't have your champ, you'd have to have the champion um, be here. So, mm -hmm. we'll see. Um, I'm just going to put Finn Balor down for both of us for the next one. Uh, I want this to be as good, if not... I mean, Finn Balor needs to continue on this streak of being, like, way above the skill level of everyone he's around right now. Oh, yeah. Like, I honestly, I kind of feel that here's a dream match that I that I would have I want. Today's Finn Balor, who's being booked as if he's on he's above everyone's level. Mm -hmm. And Pac. <laughs> yeah. Two relatively smaller dudes who are just destroying everyone that they come across. Yeah. Both in just black tights. Yeah, like so. I just I, I, w I just want to see that that match because you know both men can go at, at the power level and then go at the high flying level. Yeah. Oh my god, um, that would just be crazy. Okay. Anyway, no, I definitely um, think Finn Balor is definitely gonna win here. This is yeah. Finn is being put in this matchup to again what Cesaro did for Droganoff is to elevate him up in law in a, in a law. Oh yeah. Droganoff will get a huge momentum. He'll just make it harder for Finn to put him down like he thinks it is. And he'll eventually, Finn will do it, but it will make Droganoff look like a star. And from what I've been seeing a few things on, um, well, I always read NXT UK's results on WrestleLink. Yeah. Yeah. He had a big feud ender or something like this for a match on NXT UK that apparently like he was like super over or something like with at the end. So... This is the Droganoff is a Triple H project, you can tell. And after nice. seeing his match with Cesaro, you can see why. All right, Adam, who do you have for Rhea Ripley versus Tony Storm for the NXT Women's Championship? Uh, Rhea Ripley is ret retaining here. Um, you can't have her. I already picked her. I I'm sorry, but it's <laughs> this is not the show to be changing the belt for Rhea and this is not yeah. the time to be changing the belt off from her especially since this would be um Rhea's first title defense exactly um unless all of a sudden like Vince said I have to have Rhea Ripley on the main roster right now which would be great because I'd it would be cool rum, but put her, put her in the rumble and have it be Becky in Rhea at WrestleMania? Absolutely. Well, um, yeah. But I don't think so. Rhea is good here. Because uh, I think I know who's going to take the belt off of Rhea. I think they're going to set up... Um, they'll set up uh, Dakota Kai to take the belt off of her. Sounds, and then sounds smart. Up, and, and then they're going to set up um, either Candice or Tegan Knox to take it off of Dakota. Okay. Um, that's yeah. who I would go. That's how I would go. I would actually go with Tegan because you know that feud that they're having right now, kind of like they did with um, Champa and yeah. Basically, you do do the Champa and um, Gangaro storyline with them. Just don't do the whole like Dakota Kai manipulating Tegan. No, thing. no, no. Just Look, use that as a blue the base idea for that story as the blueprint, and you build a new story off of it around a similar kind of story, but different. Yeah. Um, though I would be, I would be fine if using Candice to take the belt off Dakota as well. Either one, but I prefer Tegan here. All right. So then we have the main event: Imperium versus Undisputed Era. This one's a hard one. It's an eight-man tag team match. So I think it would be awesome if it was elimination. But I know, I know that I would be it, crazy. To me, this would be easier to predict then. Uh, I, but yeah, first I mean, pin or submission. Oh, oh no! I I'd say this. It'd be 
Imperium would probably win because I just don't think they would have. Um, it'd be Volter in the end, and you'd have to have it like four and one with Volter eventually taking all most of them, but then it just it was too much in the end. But I still think they would go that one. But this one, when it's one pinfall, you can just it's so hard to pick. Yeah. Uh. Look, man, I'm gonna go with it, and this is who I am. I'm going to stand by my pick here. Imperium. Fuck you. <laughs> really? I'm going with Imperium. Oh, come on. I just put Imperium here. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I was like, you know what? Fine. You know what? Because I don't want to have this one be the same. I'm okay with going. I'm going to change it to Undisputed Era. Okay. I mean, I would have been willing to switch to Undisputed Era. You know what? I think I'm going to switch to Undisputed Era. <laughs> yeah, fuck, fuck you, dude. Fuck you. And yes, no, everyone no. at home, I just, I'm just i flicking off Adam right now. Okay. The uh, double burn. No, but this is going to be a match where it's going to be... Um, it's not going to be as long as you would think it would be as an eight-man tag match. There's no. going to be a... It's going to end after a spot of basically all eight men in the ring everything gets cleared out and one team is going to have their legal man on the outside they're going to have somebody on the inside with the legal man from the other team who's going to do some big move the outside legal man's going to slide in and get the pin yeah uh, so what I think it's gonna happen. The reason why I was I was gonna go with Imperium is I think Triple H is in um, repair mode after Volter's oh. um, poor performance in, on the main roster. And by poor performance, I mean Vince just saying don't see anything in him and just treat him like he's a nobody when he's not. Buried him yeah. like right away. So and then also this I, the reason I was gonna go with Imperium was because. Undisputed Era attacked hit Volter at the end of his championship matchup at the UK TakeOver. Yes. A few weeks ago. So this is a way to help rebuild up Volter and everything. So here's hoping that will happen. Uh, I mean, regardless, they're gonna, everyone's going to come out looking good in this matchup, but I, that's the reason why. But I will go with Undisputed Era because you never know. Exactly. Exactly. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know down in the comment section where you thought of our picks for um, Royal Rumble 2020 and Worlds Collide. And also, let us know down there, are you okay with Worlds Collide versus having a TakeOver show? We do have TakeOver Portland coming in two weeks, but would you rather have a TakeOver here and Worlds Collide be something they did extra during the Royal Rumble or on its own? Let us know down in the comment section. All right, so we're going to move on to our new cycle. Yes. And you had the list. You had I got, the I got it right here. Do that in. All right, so we got right away. Got to talk about AEW and NXT, the Wednesday Night Wars. It's the hottest ticket on the planet right now. Uh, AEW this week taped from the Jera Cruz. Yep. Which we'll talk about that show in a little bit. And NXT one, one was thing, live. One, one thing. One thing. We do. We know the Jericho Cruise is not the official name of the cruise. We hate the name of the Jericho Cruise, so where it is the official Jericho Cruise for us. Yeah, it's the. Come at us, Jericho. Come at us. We'd love to have you on the show to to battle us on the name. Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but. Whoa. Yeah, I I just like calling it the Jericho Cruise because, I mean, it's kind of what it is. Jericho's yeah. Cruise. <laughs> Two years in it's a row right now, there. it's been Jericho's idea of being like, you know what? I like wrestling. I like playing music. I'm putting on an event where we do both of those things on a cruise. <laughs> and also, also, I like to be on vacation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want a vacation to the Bahamas for one week. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, so the NXT lost... To a taped AEW. I know. Now, I actually was convinced that NXT was going to probably win this one. Not by much, but I figured they would overall and more people would just tune into the live show versus the 
tape show, but um, AEW show was solid. From yes, the, I checked. The, I checked the the results beforehand, um, so I knew who what the matches were, who won, and all that. And it sounded like good. There was a great amount of um, controversy over the main event because another ship kind of pulled in and blocked something somehow. Apparently. I don't oh know. no no! We'll we'll get into all of that in just a moment. But uh, yeah, yeah, they but beat NXT. NXT. They beat they them. NXT. NXT did have a gr- grow an audience f- um, in viewership to sixty nine thousand um, from last week. So they had a total of seven hundred and sixty nine thousand for this week, where they had exactly seven hundred thousand last week. Um, AEW, who had nine hundred and forty thousand last week, they had eight hundred and seventy one thousand. So there was a big dip. Because it was taped, yeah, but not enough to um, be, have NXT beat them, which is kind of sells that AEW has a solid locked in um, audience. Yes, uh, it also NXT and WWE kind of have shot themselves in the foot regarding ever getting high ratings for NXT, yeah. especially since it's competing with another show at the in, during the same time slot. Well, we talked about this when they first announced um, the deal for NXT going live two hours on the USA Network. It going right to the uh, network the following night. Yeah. We pointed this out. And while I think in the beginning, not a lot of people were doing that, but they've kind of settled into that now. I mean, honestly, if I have a choice between watching one show live and knowing that I can watch the other show the next day. Yeah. Um, on a network that I'm paying nine ninety nine for, I yeah, yeah, I'm gonna watch it the next day. <laughs> and yeah, it's just, but <sighs> but they're not doing terrible ratings overall. I no. I don't mind seeing these numbers. But it also goes to show that because um the one of the rumors going around the reason why Vince wanted NXT to go up against AEW was because the whole point was not to beat AEW in the ratings. If they did, great. That was going to be a bonus for him. But it was more enough to cipher audience away from them. So when their TV contract came up, if um, TNT decided they wanted to renew, but they would renew at a much lower price, hurting them. (laughs) Or not renew at all. And then now that the... um, (laughs) Turner Warner Media just renewed the deal for forty million a year. Yeah, all the way to twenty twenty three. Yeah, basically Vince is seeing that as up. Oh, my I failed, so he doesn't give a shit about um, NXT anymore. Which was one of the reasons why when we reported a few weeks ago, it was supposed to be ten men from all three brands. Right. And now they have gone away from that, and I'm assuming this is going to be the reason why. Vince said my goal was to cipher a way to hurt that company, and it didn't so they work. Get a so better deal. It didn't work. I don't give a shit. Fuck you, NXT. Vince, Triple H, do whatever the fuck you want. I, all your guys are no money makers. And when which, they come back up to the main roster, I'm gonna bury them. Which now I feel actually is going to, it's gonna open the doors to a, a situation, which could actually hurt AEW, because. With Vince not being part of it and bear, because he mismanages talent like oh, constantly, I think that this will actually light a fire under Hunter's ass and be like, All right, you're saying that this is a failure. Well, guess what? I'm gonna go out of my way to make this popular. I don't think he's going to because oh, okay. Triple H knows what he's doing, what he wants to do with NXT brand. I think he, when they got the two extra, the extra hour, he took it. He wanted it. I think he knew he wanted he wanted it. I don't think he necessarily the whole live on USA was part of it, because uh, he knew what would come with that. But at the same time, he took it because because of it. Yep. But at the same time, he took the extra time. He can push more of the talent that was. I mean, look at Keith Lee. He just won the North American title. But he's been with that company for over a year, and they weren't really doing much with him. No. Because they didn't have enough time in an hour with all this talent that they had signed, and they weren't getting rid of it now. So it allowed him to push push more people. He knows what he wants to do. 
And while at the end of last year, he was kind of doing these bigger, almost takeover level shows, he hasn't done one of those yet because he realized he can't, that's not sustainable. No. No. Um, and I, and since the new year, we haven't seen one of those. And I think it's because probably what would happen was over the break, they probably got wind that Warner Media was negotiating a new contract with AEW. And Vince is just like, I'm done. <sighs> and Triple H just said, okay, I can, I can continue doing what I want. I'm still going to put on good matches. I'm going to try to make the best show. I am going to try to beat them. But at the same time, he's not going to try to beat them. He's like, this is my product. This is what I'm standing on. This is yeah. what I have to do. Um, so, but we'll see. I mean, again, I do think there will be times where Triple H will put on almost a takeover level event, and we'll get that, and we'll get that balance. And I think we'll see NXT ratings go up. We'll also see AEWs. Um, I want to see that. And we'll have times where they'll be trading back and forth. Yeah. Um, who won? But. Um, who knows? It'll be interesting to see overall. Um, I anyway, what else we got? On, what's next on that list? Let's get into the Jarrah Cruz, bro. We got to get in there. Yes, we do. Um, so there were... So some people are... Okay, I got to go into one of the promos that uh, a lot of people say were... got. Britt Baker got a lot of heat. <laughs> uh, and AEW as, as a whole got a lot of heat as well because, one, a lot of people were like, oh, that was the worst promo we've ever seen and blah, blah, blah. Uh, why would AEW cut away from a promo? Why are they cutting away to commercial during a promo? Stuff like that. And it was like, um, one, it was taped. Uh, two... Here's a here's a really funny thing. Why wouldn't the announcers cut away to uh, to commercial, especially when she like the promo is making fun of one of the announcers. Mm-hmm. Like she goes starts to tear into Shivani, and like Jr. calls to go to commercial. Like Shivani actually under his breath goes, "What the fuck?" <laughs> it was just like, of course. I mean. If you if WWE during the Attitude Era had Mean Gene out there talking to somebody and The Rock just starts going down on him, early Rock, we're saying just after Rocky Maivia, they would cut away because it would get him heat. And it's getting Britt Baker, who's doing a heel turn, heat. You're, so The Rock went down on... <laughs> Not went yeah, down. I'm going... Shh, whatever. <laughs> Tore down. You finally heard it. You finally it, heard it. <laughs> all right. But yes, um, I was glad to hear about this because um, I didn't realize they cut to commercial um, for the actual broadcast. But I did. I was glad to see that they finally went the heel turn with Britt Baker because yeah. they've been teasing this. And she will be better off as a heel. She still has a lot ways to go in the ring because she's still very green. But she can't. They can play around. I think they can play around her weaknesses now, as she, uh, that she's a heel in the ring. Yep. To, for that. But it will be interesting to see what they go with that there. But I, again, I didn't know that they actually cut to a commercial. But it does make sense. Yeah. But let's go with the big news here. What the everyone singing Jericho's uh, entrance theme when he came out? No. Oh, okay. The big news here is. John Moxley challenging Chris Jericho at Revolution for the AEW Championship. Nothing else big happened on the show at all. Uh, could have sworn something else historic actually happened on the show. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it was the first ever title change in AEW history. Well, that's a tag team title, so it doesn't count. It totally counts! <laughs> <sighs> okay, yes, that was a big thing, um, especially how the, the title change went down with pretty much K- Kenny Omega knocked out by a move, and Hangman Page had to come in, save him, 
drag Omega over to the corner, get out, tag himself in, <laughs> jump out, hit a buckshot lariat on the outside to, I think it was um, Scorpio Sky, then come back in, hit a, a buckshot lariat on um, Frankie for the win. By the way, the buckshot lariat should absolutely be his finisher. The stupid reverse tombstone that he does... No, it's not. Switch, yeah, switch them around. That reverse yeah. tombstone, use it here That's and a there. Great setup. But it, That's it's a more great meant setup. to be a, uh, you know, a, a setup. Yeah, use it as a setup. But like the buckshot or, lariat, the way he does that buckshot lariat, yeah. and how fast he can. That's a great finisher. Or here's that that uh, reverse tombstone. Use that sparingly, the same way that Okada uses his uh, 360 tombstone. No, I no, I don't think it. If it was a better, a different move, I would say yes. But I just don't like it. I think it looks stupid. Um, okay. But no, but but as a setup, I still think it looks stupid. But as a setup move, it's fine. Um, Signature, like, you mean, maybe setup. I don't know. But overall, it's a great thing. It was a good little there, especially with you, Kenny selling that he's kind of coming to as he's hearing his name, like, oh wait, what we won? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the whole setup of the young bucks come down to celebrate, and they're like hugging. Ken. He, Hangman says, "Oh, go hug Kenny," and he jumps out and celebrates with the fans. Um, and then they come and come back. He's like, "No, I'm good here." And then when they're in the back, uh, basically everything the story that they're telling here is Hangman is getting pissed off by the, the bucks and Kenny. By because if they're doing stuff that they don't even realize they're doing is pissing him off. Yes, I, I I've in, I've enjoyed that like overall for his storyline right now is that the the things that are angering him are not necessarily things that Kenny the and the Young Bucks are doing on purpose. Yeah. Like it, some of it is they you know backstage hangman during, on a BTE. Wanted to hang out with Kenny, but Kenny had to go with the with the Bucks to do some work, EVP work, and Paige got ticked off about that, and it was just like Kenny's going to do his job. Yeah, <laughs> like this isn't him choosing his, those friends over you. This is him going, all right, fellow co-manager, we got to get some work done. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it was the storyline for this is really cool, especially when Hangman's last line before walking off was, "I can't believe we won these before you guys." Yes. Um, which is probably gonna be the setup where we're gonna get. Um, I kind of hope I, I was hoping not, but because I definitely want to see because the storyline with um seems like the storyline with Pac versus Omega, Pac demanding a rematch with Omega, has been dropped. I, I think they're gonna, they'll pick that back up eventually, but okay. at the same time, I'm just like. But here's my thing, I, I, you were seeing this with um the Dusty Classic as well right now. Your second ever champions for the AEW Tag Champions is people who are not tag team, an established tag team. Mm -hmm. They've been established in the last few weeks, and now they've become the champion. This is a thing that's an issue that is part of wrestling. Which I don't like. Here's a way. They're actually going to be the transitional champs. Their storyline will be no. that Kenny's not good enough and Paige has to carry the team. And there's going to be a point where Paige doesn't rescue Kenny. He just no, walks away. I know away. that, but I'm my, that's, I don't care about what the storyline is. My point is in American wrestling. Oh, yeah, it happens. For wrestling. It happens way too often, especially when your first, your second tag team ever to hold the belts is to one of these teams. I'm sorry. Yes, I get it. It's going to happen throughout at, at different times. It would make more sense if they were an established team that was also known to go break, take a break from the tag team, not break up, but yeah. go for single titles like in Japan, but also come back as a tag team later on. That would make more sense. But because they weren't, it just, I get what they're going with it, but at the same time, it just, it's annoying. Especially when you have good tag teams, like you have um, Proud and Strong, or Strong and Proud, whatever Santana's. Strong and Proud. proud Pride yeah. and Powerful. 
proud, powerful, um, terrible name. Santana and Ortiz, SAO. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, them, you have the Young Bucks. Yep. You got Jurassic Express. Yep. Which is more, the, yes, they're doing more of the six man thing, but at the same time, you have them. You have the Dark Order. You have these different teams you could be doing stuff with. But you chose to go with this direction. I'm sorry. I don't like it. But again, I know what the story they're, they're telling, but at the same time. Yeah. It's just not as your, your second ever tag team champions, is my opinion. Um, I mean, they're doing the same thing with the Dusty Classic when you had the the combined team of Pete Dunne and... Um, Matt Riddle. I can Matt Riddle. The, the same thing. The first ever Dusty Classic is Finn Balor and Samoa Joe, who they just threw together uh, for, there. So it's just like, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> yes, I'd like tag team wrestling, but use your tag teams when you have a good tag team division. Yeah. So, eh, but no big we'll deal. See. Oh, but let's move. Speaking of tag team wrestling, oh. next week we're gonna have a, a first ever. Happen for AEW. The Another first, first for gen- AEW? Well, it's a new company, so there's a lot of firsts for them to do. Are you saying that a brand new company, a brand new promotion is going to have a lot of firsts going over their first couple of years? I don't believe it. <laughs> Wake up. Okay. Anyway, it is going to be... Um, actually, no, I don't think it's next week. I actually think it's happening on the cruise now. I look at it. Um... Yes, it happened on the cruise. It's, it's not going to be next week. It's actually happened on the Jero cruise. It was the first ever intergender tag team match where NXT, I mean, AEW Women's Champion Rio and new AEW te- World Tag Team Champion Kenny Omega um, defeated Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. Um, and there was lots of intergender matchups, and there it was talking about how um, Omega went hard on Ford and didn't oh. seem to be letting up on her. Oh, so it was actual intergender match. Yes. Not a. Uh, uh, if right the here, lady Omega gets tagged in, you have to tag your your female partner, yeah. WWE no, style. A, yeah. It says here it was reported that he hits a dragon suplex on Ford at one point. That he didn't hold back on at all. See, the thing is, it's so weird. His dragon suplex, because of how fast it is, mm-hmm. always looks vicious. But if you yeah. slow it down, it looks like he's the one who lands and he just slides whoever it is up his shoulder to make it look like yeah. they hit. Yeah. It's because they, when he they land, it hits more on the neck. So it looks painful. But he's... Yeah, so and then Rio got involved with um, Kip Sabian as well. So um, I'm hoping this will maybe show up as an, a dark episode. Oh, I hope so too. By the way, uh, the uh, AEW Dark this week and the one bonus match that they threw out there, great this week. The bonus yes. match was Strong Hearts versus Lucha Express. Yes, I did hear about that. No. I believe Lucha Express won. Yes, they did. And that was a the flip powerbomb that they use as their finish, where Luchasaurus literally sets a guy up in a powerbomb position, and he flips him up over himself, and yep. um, Jungle Boy catches them in the powerbomb. Is sick. Yeah. <laughs> so... Well, speaking, well, since we're with AEW here, we'll still keep with them. Apparently, Lance Archer, former New Japan Pro Wrestling United States Champion, is in high-level talks with AEW. Yes, I've heard this. And so, uh, I would like this. It's a good thing because, I mean, he had the year of his life this past year in um, New Japan. Mm-hmm. And... I'm pretty sure um, after Moxie's matchup with him at um, Wrestle Kingdom, if he knew that, found out that his contract was coming up, he's probably like, "Oh yeah, we want. I want him in here." Well, not just that. You you have, you know, uh, the Young Bucks, Kenny, who have worked with him in the past. Yeah. You know, have spent a time with him in a locker room. One of the rumors that I heard was that Lance Archer was hard to work with. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. 
if you have guys who have worked with you as your new bosses and they felt that you were difficult to work with, they're not going to hire you. Exactly. <laughs> um, Archer actually will be turning 43 next month. Okay, so this is... Uh, I can see that this would be a Lance Archer going, okay, I got two years. Yeah, he, he's probably saying that his career is going to be coming to an end soon. Um, if I can get a good deal with AEW, yeah, I can go back home. I can have a good run on t- national TV there. And, all and that. then retire. So, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, and hopefully things will work out. Like, I mean, he was a good talent. I was really impressed with that matchup. Yeah. Um, especially the finish for that matchup. By the way, have you watched Wrestle Kingdom yet? Nope. Still have not. At this point, it was more of a, I forgot. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> Because it starts off, like, the, the cycle always is, I don't have time right after the event. And then for, like, and that'll be, like, two weeks. And then it will just be, oh, crap, man, I had total time this past week to sit down and watch it. And I forgot. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to spoil the ending of this matchup because okay. you've had time. Um, because the finish is really pr- a really good finish. Because we all know the tables in New Japan are not the typical tables. Yeah. And... He, uh, Moxie hits the um, paradigm shift through a table, and the way Lance Lent hits, wow. All right, but yes, um, but basically Moxie hits a paradigm shift off the apron through the table, and the way Mo- Archer lands, holy shit, it's like looks painful and it's beautiful and just to know before we move on to the next one archer is not under contract with new japan pro wrestling he can negotiate with people cool cool good for him so basically he has a working relationship with them at the moment so um so all right we're gonna move on i believe adam are we moving on to the eva marie story That's oh right. yes we are tim that's right there's a sexist airline out there and they are boo the uh, you, this is a moment where you stand up i don't know where you are you point and you say boo that airline which airline are we booing okay it is and why are we booing um, them qantas um airline okay so if you don't anyway, people don't know don't remember eva marie she's the person who had the red hair that everyone hated because she could not wrestle for the life of her yes um i mean she left to she left wwe and she's been doing a lot of other stuff out there um and her current thing she's doing is like active wear and fitness which she's perfect for honestly so fitness model slash just, fitness person yeah celebrity overall so what she was doing, her and her husband were going um, from Melbourne, flying Qantas Air. They had business class tickets, and they decided to go to the business lounge for the airline. She was not allowed to enter the business class because she, the way she was dressed, and she was because she was in active wear, um, which is her business. Yeah, that's okay. I so, mean, and you may say. So it, now, before anyone says that's the big, oh, it's business class, you shouldn't be wearing regardless of what your business is. No, no, I was going to say that. It's true, and it's true. But after she posted the picture of what she was wearing and saying this, she then posted another picture. Um, this is not a dress code issue. This is clearly something I mean, sexist remarks because her husband, in the photo, she shows the picture of her, what she was wearing, and what her husband's wearing. Wearing shorts gym shorts and an athletic shirt and a hat who got um was allowed to enter the business class lounge okay this so clearly, it was purely because sexist she was wearing yoga pants yep and like i'm well, sorry ma'am sorry, man. you're wearing yoga pants you're not allowed in here these men yeah. you will they will soil their pants at the sight of you but yeah, her husband, who was right there, who was in the same kind of clothes, can go in, but she's not allowed to. It's absolute bullshit. Okay. I mean, if it had been uh, a situation where they were, where the the management of the 
uh, lounge was like, no, to both of you, because, you know, this is it's a suits like you yeah. got to have a you know, you got to be a professional, you know, professional attire, you know, office attire. I'd be like, OK, well, that's totally different. That that makes yes. sense. But, but being like, husband- no, ma'am, not you because you're wearing yoga pants, but your husband who is wearing loose fitting shorts and a rayon shirt is more than welcome in here right now. Oh, yeah. that's so it's just like, oh, my God, it's like, <sighs> this is just so dumb. And it, she's right. It's 20 fucking 20. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if this and was if this was the 80s, I may be able to better understand that. But it's not. It's still not. It's still not right. But yeah, different time periods. Um, but at the same time, yeah. And I'm glad she called this airline out. Yes. I hope more people who, if they've had a similar experience, will call them out on it because it's bullshit. It's just no. And one of the best ways to take care of it is to um, call it out and shame them. Yeah. Because it's not okay. I, no, of course not. Look, if you're going to have a policy that you can't wear active wear, it needs to be everyone wearing active wear. Like, I, I'm sorry. That's for me. I've always, I mean, I've personally run into it a few times. I, I've worked at places where they've told me I can't have earrings. So I asked them that if is the policy that no employee wears earrings. Otherwise, it's a sexist policy. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to actually read both of her tweets really quickly just so people can um, hear what it is. Okay. In 2020, at Qantas Airlines Melbourne won't allow a woman holding a business class ticket to enter their business class lounge in active wear. My business is fitness and active lifestyle. Qantas prefers their women in dresses. Hashtag gender discrimination. Hashtag Qantas. Her follow-up is clarification. This is not a dress code issue. I support businesses' right to enforce adequate dress codes and standards. However, my husband was allowed in no problem wearing this, while I was kicked out wearing this. My issue is that the standards should be equal, equal and enforced, equally enforced. Yeah. At Qantas, and she posts a photo of her husband and herself. Exactly. So. Absolutely right to call that, them out. All right, so since we're, we're on sexual discrimination, let's talk about what Ryback said. Oh, God. And apparently Booker <laughs> what T- did Ryback say this time? So, we're bringing up Tessa Blanchard again. Okay, so the more not that Not in the I'm... context that you... Not in the context we've been bringing her up lately. This is about her Impact World Championship win... win I didn't see Booker T's um, comments, but apparently he said something similar mm-hmm. that um, they don't agree. And Ryback says, don't believe it was a good thing because a woman wins men's championship because it, A, it degrades the women's championship, all this stuff. Like, <sighs> I'll read what he said here. Um, it's weird to me. I say this from a standpoint in, of if Black Lester came out on Raw and wanting to be women's champion, is that okay? There's a reason why they have titles and things that, of that nature. I don't understand why they're going that way. If you're, they're just trying to get people to talk, that's not a good road to go down. Ryback said, echoed Booker T's segment of that. It's not against Tessa Blanchard. She's doing her job. My thing is, my thing is, does not, now how does she defend that heavyweight championship against other women? Uh, what? What about other men on the roster? Where do you go from the, from it? I think there is would be an outrage against women in all sports if men wanted to fight for the women's titles. There would be some there would be so many arguments as to why they shouldn't do it. So it why is it okay to go there otherwise? Um, then he brings up about the whole weight class system in real fighting and how wrestling is supposed to be a simulation of fighting. I don't know when how, when he started stop keep, keeping track of pro wrestling because yes, pro wrestling is a simulation of a fight, of a Hollywood fight. 
yeah. not actual fighting. No. Because if this was an actual simulation of real fighting, you don't have the types of moves you do in pro wrestling. Exactly. In a real fight. Okay. So I'm going to go on a rant here. Oh, please do. And, like, so and I'm going to tear right back apart. So, uh, um, I mean, I'm going to go on a rant after that, too. So. Okay. Right away. One, this one, is, one more, yes, one, what? One thing, one thing. So, everyone, buckle in. Buckle in. This is going to go be a long ride. Uh, not really. We have about 15 minutes left on our time. So, <laughs> I'm not going to take 15. We've only gone for like three hours. We have another three hours to bro. Anyway, uh, right back. I'm going to address this. I'm going to point for point on you. Okay. Uh, it degrades the other the other titles, uh, the entire division. I want you to realize that the, first of all, the Impact World Championship is not the Impact Men's World Championship. It's an open championship. Much like you don't have your heavyweights competing in the cruiserweight division because it's a cruiserweight division. It has a, it has an added, it, it has a stipulation. The women's division has a stipulation. Okay. The world championship does not have a stipulation on it. It's a open championship. So anybody on the roster can challenge for it and impact opened it up that way. So it actually elevated their world championship a little bit. <sighs> saying that it diminishes further, saying that it diminishes, any time that uh, a cruiserweights held the a world championship, did it did it lower the championship? Did it degrade the championship? Did it degrade the division that they came from? No. It's right. It's right back. So probably in his opinion, yes. Okay. Well, either way, it doesn't. And then asking the question of, well, will she defend it against men or just women? Of course she's going to defend it against men. It's an open championship. <sighs> like, I don't know how many times people need to hear the word open championship for, before they realize that anybody on the roster can challenge for it. Will they constantly have women and men challenging for the title? No. But will there be instances where it will be under the rules, totally feasible? Yes. This is one of those instances. <laughs> God. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry. I I don't want to be, after finding out more and more and more about Tessa Blanchard, I don't want to be the one that has to, that has to defend her. She's, turns out she's an asshole. <laughs> yes. But um, she's the current we're... champion, okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of development in that story. We're not going to go into it because it's just, yes, it is. Um, we were defending her and I still do have the right to think we should defend her at the same time. There's more stuff coming out and it's on both sides. So I'm just like, yeah. nothing's been really cleared up. So I'm just going to, we're going to drop that element until unless something comes out that's absolute proof on either side. Um, but yes, the one thing we can say for a fact that Tressa Blanchard has been in the past and there is evidence that she hasn't really changed that much now as being an asshole. But that's fine. Yeah. Make your champion an asshole. Whatever. Look at, look at Seth Rollins. She, he is a fucking asshole on Twitter, and now he's a, the biggest heel in on Raw. Yeah. It was Monday night, Monday night's Messiah gimmick. It fits. So, but now it's my turn to rant. I'm gonna rant for like five hours. No, not really. Okay. Okay. So my whole point is here is this. Is, so women can't fight men realistically. He does point out in his arguments that if you, when you if you have in the weight classes, um, a lightweight going against a heavyweight, majority of the time the lightweight is going to get crushed. Yeah. True and all that. But you know what? This is not real fighting. It's not even a simulation of real fighting. It, that's been long gone for a very long time. And to say that it works better when it keeps closer to real fights... Even when you were wrestling in WWE, Ryback, it was not a real fight. No. Uh, you could say you could try to do that. Your your um, finisher was not ever done anything you'd ever do in a real fight. So stop trying to make it like it's a real fight. It's more Hollywood fighting style, if anything. 
a simulation, but in a ring with rules as a simulation of a sport. And then to go back to uh, Impact, their former champion, um, Sammy Callahan, even said in a promo after Tessa Blanchard became number one contender that he is going to defeat her, put her out of wrestling for good, and then he might just drop down into the knockouts division and win that one just for the hell of it. Yeah. yeah. Saying he, eh, for that. But the whole point is this. Yes, there is no ever, there's no actual stipulation on any championship. It's perceived there could be a stipulation on the men's championship, world championships, because only men have challenged for them. Right. So at any time, though, because there's, and that actually says, only men can challenge for this championship, it's technically an open championship without an actual rule stated to it. Weight divisions and fights, yes, there's a reason for that. Those are stipulations on the belts. Yes. And then you have, at the same time, um, for the in wrestling, cruiserweights, is there for you have the people who can face other people within their same weight class, but it doesn't preclude them from moving up. Yeah. Now, in WWE, they don't have that same mind frame that they have to go in Japan, where you literally have to be above the weight class. Yes. Yes. WWE will use that as a storyline gimmick, and during the Cruiserweight Classic, they did actually make sure you were in the weight class, which was good. But it's WWE. They don't. They're not. Gonna, it's not that big of a deal to them if you meet the weight limit. Yeah. <laughs> um. But you. But in New Japan, if you're a junior heavyweight and you want to move up into the heavyweight division. You have to be above the weight limit. You have yeah. to be in the heavyweight class. It's 206 pounds. So that's the thing. Tessa Blanchard, there's no such weight um, requirement in impact. It's not that big of a deal. And the fact that the, if you watch the entire storyline of Sally Can- uh, Canahan and Tessa Blanchard, this Tessa finally beat him. She lost... Only clearly the first two matches. Yeah. A few times. So it's not like they're saying that women can come in and are going to just destroy men. They're making it believable. Who says the next time we have Sally Callahan and Tessa Blanchard, Callahan won't win again. That's the thing you got to understand. You can do intergender, you can have men and women wrestle and have women win, men win over and over based on different things. The story you're telling, because it's a story. You got to remember that. In yeah. fighting, there's no story. You try to position a story to make it more interesting to people to tune in, but it really comes down to they're telling the story of why you want to see these two fu- beat the shit out of each other in the ring. Yeah. That's what UFC yeah. does. They're not trying to tell a storyline, well, this guy's going to go on to be. An actual an actual story. It's a why do we want to see these two fight? Why do we want to see them beat the shit out of each other? That's all the story is. And you're using past fights and their win and win records and losses and all that to gauge that story to see, get people to tune in to see the fight. Well, we're actually telling stories, soap opera style. Yeah. <laughs> so. It fits within wrestling. I'm sorry. You can delude yourself all you want, but it's fine. Now, having a woman after woman after woman winning the, wi- the world championship and then no men, yes, that would be an issue. But I don't think that's going to be. No. No. So to, say, to come out and say this is an issue right after she's won it, no. Wait to see what they're going to do with it. And then if it's actually something that is legit of an issue, bring that up. Yeah. Because if you bring it up, they apparently pay attention. Maybe they'll make that tweak to make it more realistic. Yes, the next challenger for the championship is probably going to be Tyre Valkyrie. I think that's a great move because it shows that you're going to have other women who can come in and challenge for this title for as yeah. well as men. But that's my rant. I could go a lot longer, and we we have other things we gotta talk about in yes. the last like yes. three minutes. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna jump. We're since we're speaking with women, let's just continue with this one. Um, 
There's apparently a thing that they're going to be t- renaming the NXT Women's Championship to the NXT Championship. I don't... Huh? huh? Now... There's already an NXT, NXT championship. championship. Yeah, so it's... I get the whole idea is like to... Um, the, take out the um, women's and because it can be a limita- limita- uh, limitation in a sense... And Becky Lynch brought this up on WWE backstage, and she's saying how um, she wants to remove the term "women" uh, from, from wrestling. And people, she got apparently got flack on Twitter, so she had to respond saying, "Look, I'm trying. Not saying don't get rid of the special women's championships or anything like that. She's just saying it's become a problem in the business in wrestling history, where you have oh, we already have a women's matchup on the card." Oh, that so, that concept. Okay. The problem is you can't get rid of the that w- Okay. No, that's, this is that what Becky said on backstage in com- what they're doing with the title is two different things. I'm just bringing that up. Okay. All right. Because what Becky is saying, I agree with. The limitation of the women, we always have a women's match on the card. Right. Is right. Because one of the things that she was her point was is you should have as many women matches on the card that have earned it. If you've got based on the storyline, yeah. people involved them, and if you don't have, if they haven't earned their spot on this pay per view card because they don't have a good storyline ready for that, then they shouldn't be there. Absolutely. Now, when you go to the renaming the title, like NXT, it wouldn't be that confusing on t- TV because. Obviously, the NXT champion is whoever you're talking about is holding the belt in the ring. Yeah. You can tell the difference. But on Twitter, social media, in text format, unless you say the champion's name, you don't know who you're talking about. You say NXT champion. Yeah. Also, I kind of feel that it's, as I said earlier, you're are you going to change the uh, Cruiserweight Championship to the NXT Championship that the North American Championship, is that going to be just changed to NXT Championship? Are you going to have four, five NXT Championships? One of them is just held by two people? <laughs> because we need to get rid of I all think, the labels? I get, what they're, I get what they're trying to do. I think changing the name is not the, the way to go. But no. redefining um, who's holding it. I get the why they're... What they're I think it's a good thing that they're tr- having these conversations... But it's you gotta find what works. Yeah, you need divisions, um, and the real way to do this is to have an open division at yes. some point between. But WWE won't do that. No, no, they won't. But I, I feel because like you your world championship is supposed to be your open championship. Yeah. Anyone can challenge um, for it. So, which will be interesting to see if they go that route when, because the, uh, there was rumors last. Begin after WrestleMania to have Charlotte win the Intercontinental Championship. Okay. So they can have someone else other than China have done it. Um, <laughs> so, but again, it's just one of those things where I'm glad Becky brought that thing up about the limitation, but changing the women's division X division to an NXT Championship. Mm-hmm. It's just it's gonna be caused too much confusion. Have Charlotte pin Andrade for the championship. <laughs> All right, so we got. Um, we two have more two stories. minutes to go over this. Okay, we're just gonna go over rumor killer really quickly. Sorry, I mean one minute. Rumor going, uh, going around that uh, Vincent Pat Patterson ruined Rocky Johnson's funeral. Thank you, Billy Graham, for overselling everything about this story. And no, it didn't happen. Yes, they talked. Yes, Pat Patterson's mic was cut. That's because he wouldn't shut up. Yeah, he's probably he the, saying bad things. the drunk friend at a funeral that you're like, okay, we got to kick his mic. I mean, he hasn't said yeah. anything weird, but he won't stop talking. <laughs> yes. And then moving on to racism, which is not actually racism. Um, Seth Rollins posted a spot on his, I think, Instagram or Twitter uh, that showed, like, witches in the background. And people immediately said... Um, Accused him of being a racist and being part of a uh, supporter of the KKK because the hats look like that. And someone defended Rollins saying he was one of the first athletes to come out and black li- support Black Lives Matter. Um, Rollins responded to that saying the witch- it's witches. 
It's for a creepy coffee thing. His, I'm helping my friend out. Apolo and he apologized for the confusion. He then said, F the, fuck the KKK, fuck racism. Thank you, Seth Rollins, but that's not a very good heel movement. I know. Helping out a friend. <laughs> Seth Rollins is... to go. So I'm figuring out that Seth Rollins on Twitter is Seth Rollins in the ring's worst enemy. They, yeah. Really in the is. ring, they're presenting him as a good guy. He becomes an asshole on Twitter. He's a he's an asshole on TV. Immediately becomes the good guy on Twitter. I'm yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but uh, it does look like he's. Uh, it was a horrible mistake, and like he may be he may be an asshole, but he's not an idiot. <laughs> I think it was. I really just think it was someone who doesn't like Seth Rollins has looked for a way to bash him. As oh yeah, they probably. Could. Um, so, but I do. Th I, I do think it was good for him to at least apologize for anyone who did take a f thought that. Right. Um, and he just clarifying it. Um, it was a good thing there, though. I don't think people it should it should be that big of an issue. No, no, um, no, no, really. But it just shows you the tension we have in the this country right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for you today. Let us know down in the comment section what you thought of the news, our predictions, all that. Before you go, give us a thumbs up. It really helps support um, Zop Gaming, and it helps get our YouTube to support um, actually advertise us. Yeah. So let's see if we can get five likes on this Whew. video or podcast. Uh, while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Ding! Ring that bell. Ding, ding! And get bent like Ray Bax and Booker T's stupid macho opinions. <laughs>